I say there is your name Captain Troy. That's right. Is it true that uh, your vessel is about to embark for the island of Mane Mane? We'll be getting underway as soon as the lines are cast off. Ah, capital. My name's Derwin Whittlesey, and this is my nephew, Alfred Whittlesey. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Young Master Alfred here is also bound for Mane Mane. Oh? I've been away to school, sir. My father's quite eager to see me, sir. No, oh, he is, huh? He's on Money Money? He's Admiral Whittlesey, the missionary, sir. Might I add that we'll all be greatly obliged if you can manage to accommodate the lad on board, Captain? It'll take up very little room, sir. Is that a promise? On my honor as a gentleman, sir. <laughs> well, welcome aboard. I'll be a good lad, boy. And uh, give my dear brother my warmest regards. I will indeed, Uncle. Thank you, Captain Troy. Thank you very much. We'll take good care of it. Oh, I don't doubt it for a minute. Oh, look alive, matey. We've got ourselves a passenger. Darwin, my friend. What a pleasant surprise. Good morning, Hubert. Handsome little fella. Your nephew, did you say? I only met him on the street just this morning. Oh. He offered me 50 francs to pretend I was his uncle. I? Never laid eyes on the little blighter before in my life. Mm. <sighs> Wave politely to my nephew, Hubert, and I'll buy you a gin and pitters for breakfast. Aye. Oh, it's nice to have a family. Thank you, Phil. Listen, I've just been checking this list. It's the inventory of the Tomlinson furniture. Yeah. Bathtub, birdcage? Yeah. I feel like a moving van. One Queen Anne sideboard, one Chippendale china closet, one eight-leg refectory uh -huh. table, ten high-back Victorian chairs. This is going to be quite a good job, boy. Well, I don't know. We ought to be off that island 24 hours. Yeah, I sure hope so. Yeah. What's the course? Zero, five, zero. Light air should be a pleasant watch. Zero, five, zero it is. Oh, by the way, how's our passenger? <laughs> we'll see for yourself. Where's our next course change, navigator? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, you 
calculations look pretty good. Chevalier's permission, sir. I mean, to use your equipment. I promise it won't happen again, sir. Well, make me another promise. Oh, yes, sir. All right, promise to stop calling me sir. My name is Adam. Yes, sir. I mean, mm, Adam. Adam. <clears throat> I think it's time we, um, we put you to bed. Well, I'd rather not, if you don't mind. This is my favorite time of day on the sea. After the sun's gone down, before night's really come, I like it best then. I like it best then, too. Do you suppose all seagoing chaps feel the same way? Well, of course, I'm not a seagoing chap yet. But it's the only thing I truly want to be. Someday I'm going to own a ship like this. A ship with sails and ply between the islands. I think I should warn you there are easier ways to make a living. I'm afraid they wouldn't interest me. I'm afraid they wouldn't interest me either. You'll have better luck with the light off. Adam? Yeah? How much longer before we get there? Well, I'd say around 48 hours. Now, don't tell me you're getting homesick. I don't know. I've never been homesick. But I'll be awfully glad to see Monty Monty again. How long have you lived there? Since I was born. And practically since I was born. As long as I can remember anyhow. Your brothers or sisters? Eight. Eight. Four sisters and four brothers. Well, no wonder you're homesick. You have a lot of people to miss. Well, get some sleep. You'll be seeing them before you know it. Good night. Good night. Time goes by so slowly when you're in a hurry to get somewhere. Doesn't it? Yes, it does. We'll try and make it pass quicker tomorrow. How, Adam? I don't know. We'll think of something. See you at breakfast. Degrees, 10 minutes. 78 degrees, 10 minutes. That's it, Adam. That's the high point. We've got a sunrise. He's a regular Magellan. <laughs> Only better. Come on below, lady. We'll plot our course on the chart. Yes, sir. Should be right here. Now, you see where the sun line went off about 10 or 14 miles? Of course, that's not bad, since no navigator can get an accurate position with one line alone. On the other hand, we're able to shoot three good stars tonight. And we have a fix. Perfect fix. And that should put us at Mane Mane at, say, about uh, 9 o'clock in the morning. That soon? Well, unless we have a wind shift, that could slow us up. I see. Hey, I thought you were anxious to get home. Oh, I am. It's just... Now, listen, we've had two great days together. But tomorrow, when you see your father and your brothers and your sisters, you'll be the happiest boy in the world. Oh, yes, Adam. Yes, I will. <laughs>
Where's our passenger? Could he be the first ashore? He said he wasn't feeling so hot. The sea was a little rough this morning. What's all this, lad? Not feeling very good. Well, nothing serious, I'm sure. You don't seem to have a temperature. I wonder what's wrong. My father's a missionary, and he knows medicine. If we'll just get him. It's a good idea. Where does he live? Two and a half miles in there, just past the village. I'm really all right. No, I'm sure you are. Just too much excitement. Look, your father and I'll be back in a short while. Meanwhile, Chris will be on deck in case you need him. Yeah? I want to thank you for everything. Sure. Is this Mr. Whittlesey's house? His house, yes, but he isn't home. Mr. Whittlesey has gone fishing and won't be back till noon. Oh, I see. Well, tell him his son is aboard my ship, the Tiki. Son? Yes, his son. Oh, and he's not feeling too well, so it's rather important. Thank you. Mr. Whittlesey is a bachelor. He never married. He has no son. Are you sure? Mr. Whittlesey has lived in Mani Mani 20, maybe 30 years. He has no son. Hi, uh, buddy. I got your five men picked out to haul the furniture. We can find the Tomlinson house. Never mind that. Where's uh, Alfred? Still in his cabin, I guess. Good. Come on. Captain Troy. I say, might either of you gentlemen be Captain Troy? Well, I, mean, I, I am. I'm Frederica Tomlinson. How do you do? How do you do? This is my first mate, Chris Parker. Hello there. Hello. I heard the ship was in. You've come to pick up our furniture, I imagine. Oh, you're Colonel Tomlinson's... Uh, daughter. Daughter. I see you've never met Father. He's quite a bit older. No, we picked up the cargo on consignment from ship in Tahiti. Well, you'll find everything at the house crated and ready. I thought I'd show you the way. By all means. Uh, hadn't one of us better look for Alfred? Oh, him. Yeah. Check the dock area. Probably hasn't gone very far. We're missing a passenger, Alfred Whittlesey. Says he's lived on the island most of his life. Alfred Whittlesey? Would he be any relation to Reverend Whittlesey? Claimed he was his son. Son? I'm afraid that's quite impossible. You see, the Reverend has no children. And so the native told us. But still, I don't understand any of this. Perhaps he's one of the Reverend's nephews. I know he has several in England. He specifically referred to the Reverend as his father and said he had four brothers and four sisters. Captain Troy, mm. I've done a good deal of work in the field of child psychology. I specialized in it in college. I'm afraid you've been taken in by a little boy's overactive imagination. Yes, well, I suppose you're right. 
Well, Chris, you look for Alfred. Uh, Miss Tomlinson and I are going over to the house and check the cargo. <laughs> Thanks, old buddy. I'd come back? Yes, Robert. Is everything ready? Yes, Robert. Just like you said. Good. We haven't much time. Come on. There's your cargo, Captain Troy. Six years of accumulated living, all neatly packed and ready for departure. six years, huh? Oh, good heavens, no. I've spent the past four years in England. I only came back to help father move. It's breaking his heart, the poor dear. Why'd he leave? The colonial office is closing down the post. Originally, father was sent out as administrator, but he's done the job so well, there's no longer any need for him here. He's been transferred back to London. <laughs> there's no Alfred Whittlesey. This is his picture. I'm afraid you're mistaken, Captain Troy. This is my brother, Robert. Well, whoever he is, I brought him to Monte Monte this morning. Wrong again, Captain. Robert is in Papa 80 with his father. Miss Tomlinson, this is the boy who came aboard the Tiki claiming to be Reverend Whittlesey's son. I spent three days and three nights with him. I ought to know his picture when I see it. Ought to, but obviously don't. Don't you realize your, your brother's run away and is here on Monte Monte? Robert is a very well-mannered and proper young man. I'm sure he would never consider running away from anyone, least of all our father, whom he adores. I'm afraid you really are incapable of understanding the mind of a child. You'll be good enough to come with me. I'll be happy to show you the clothing he left behind. Clothing? Are you now suggesting that Robert is running about the island naked? Really, Captain, I'm beginning to suspect you are quite mad. Miss Thompson, this way. Really, Please, Captain Troy. This way. Robert. I, I must say this is rather odd. And this. Good heavens. This means Robert's been missing from Tahiti for the past few days. We must notify Father immediately. He's probably frantic. Adam, I can't find that kid anywhere. Let's go. KAMU, this is Tahiti Police. Uh, come in, please. This is KAMU, Schooner Tiki. I'm calling Inspector Marcel Bouchard over. Hello, Tiki. This is Inspector Bouchard. Come in, please. Uh, Marcel, this is Adam. I'm trying to locate Colonel William Thomason for half an hour. Over. Yes, Adam. He's with me now. Over. Tell him his son is on money, money. I repeat. Robert Tomlinson is here on Money Money Over. Adam, this is marvelous news. We have been frantic with worry. Is he with you now? Over. Well, no. That is, he ran away. Adam, will you be explicit? Is Robert Tomlinson with you or isn't he? Yes and no. He came to Money Money aboard the Tiki, but when we docked, he left the ship. We've been looking for him. This is Colonel Tomlinson. I want my son back. Do you hear? If you kidnapped him aboard this ship of yours, I'll see that you spend the rest of your life in prison. Uh, Colonel, I assure you, I did not kidnap your son. I didn't know who he really was until half an hour ago. How soon can I charter a seaplane for Manny Manny? Not before tomorrow morning, then sir. Then that'll have to do. Hmm. Adam, this is Inspector Bouchard. Colonel Tomlinson will be arriving by seaplane tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, young man, you'd better find my son. Uh, we'll do our best, sir. KMU over and out. Where do we get help? Omu. 
chief of the island. He knows Robert, and he's a very dear friend of father's. Let's talk to him. Captain Troy. Well? For the record, may I say this entire matter is your responsibility? I'm already painfully aware of that fact, Miss Tomlinson. <laughs> Carla, we have our secret place. No one will ever, ever find me. And now, back to Adventures in Paradise. Robert's a very clever little boy. And so I've found out. Do not blame yourself too much. We grown-ups always tend to underestimate our children. Well, he can't get very far. Well, distance is not the problem. Mane Mane has many places where a child may hide. Caves made by volcanic action many years ago. A determined young man could give us a merry chase for a long, long time. Robert and his friends have been playing in caves for years. It's a common practice for children to have a secret place they call their very own. Miss Tomlinson understands children well. She has made a study of their behavior. Yes, yeah, so she told me. We have only until nightfall. After dark, I'm afraid it'd be impossible to find them. Cara! I will tell my daughter to summon the men. Luana, where's my daughter? I do not know. I have not seen her all day. Not even for the noon meal. But this is not like her. Most of the children of the village have been gone all day. Tell the men to come here at once. We will start the search immediately. But it appears we may be facing a conspiracy. voice a few minutes ago. Oh, yeah? Where? Somewhere in the jungle. Captain Troy. Yes? I'm afraid I owe you an apology. Well, forget it. I must have seemed terribly pompous. Forget it. Thank you, Captain Troy. Your little brother calls me Adam. Adam. What does your little brother call you? My name is Frederica, but Robert calls me Ricky. seem to be causing you a great deal of trouble. I'm sorry. That's no trouble. <laughs> no trouble at all. What's happening out there? Nothing much. Your sister just kissed a man.
Captain Troy. Captain Troy. Wake up, Captain Troy. For you. Shh. No one must hear us. If I take my finger away, will you promise not to talk above a whisper? I'm going to take you to see Robert. Robert! <coughs> Robert. Do you have a handkerchief? Do I have a handkerchief? <clears throat> this do? Are you ready? Yes. This way, Now, just a minute, young lady. Do you mind telling me what this is all about? You're going to our secret place. You must be blindfolded, Robert said, or you might tell grown-ups where we are. And what if I promise not to tell? Robert said. Uh, Robert said. Captain Troy, and we promise not to hurt you. Move the blindfold, Kara. Permit me. Please sit down. wondering why I sent for you, Adam. As a matter of fact, I am. Because I decided I could trust you. Well, thank you, Robert. I'm going to live on money, money for the rest of my life. I'm not going to England. I see. What are you going to do on my, my? Well, I'll do awfully well. There's plenty of fish in the ocean, and all sorts of food on the trees. I have ever so many friends, like Kara. Well, I'm sure you do, Robert, but... You know, your father and sister love you very much. I'm sure they can get along without me. My father has friends in England. My sister is rather pretty. She'll find a husband one day. Uh, oh, so they don't have to depend on you. No, they'll do very nicely. That's why I sent for you. Oh? I want you to tell them. Tell them what? Tell them I've decided to live on Monty Monty. Tell them I am well unhappy. Tell them not to look for me, for they shan't find me, ever. Robert, your father will be arriving in the morning by plane. He, he's worried about you. He wants you with him. I understand. But it's no use. I've made up my mind. I see. Can I truly trust you, Adam? Are you really my friend? Of course I am. You know that. And you will explain to them. Well, I'll explain. You must make a promise as a true and trusted friend. All right. Promises can never, never be broken. Not between friends. Promises can never be broken. You must promise never to reveal this place where I live. Never, ever, till I give you permission. Well, that's not fair, Robert. That's, that's a big promise. Is there such a thing as too big a promise between friends? I thought that's what friends were for. Robert, uh... Well, what if your father and your sister just want to talk to you? Just want to see you once more. Tell them one day when I'm older, I'll come to England. But only for a visit. Maybe a fortnight. They love you, Robert. I know they love me, Adam. You mustn't worry. And I know they won't like not having me with them. They're both quite used to me, really. But one must accept the way life is, Adam. They will understand one day. Well, you're asking a lot, Robert. You know, your father is... As a true and trusted friend, Adam, you must give me your solemn word you will never, never tell them where I am. Well, Adam? You have my word. Thank you, Adam. I'm sure you're very tired. Carl says you worked very hard searching for me. Perhaps you'd best get some sleep. Yes, maybe I'd better. 
Well, good night. Robert, should I? Blindfold is no longer necessary, Kara. Adam is our true and trusted friend. I'm just the bear he's loaded for. What are you going to tell him? I'm open to suggestions. Captain Troy, my name is Tumlinson. They do, Colonel Thomas. Have you located my son? Yes, I have. That's very good news. Where is he? Well, I'd like to talk to you alone about that. And why is that? It's very important. Very well. In my cabin. Eternity. I've had a great deal of time to think since then. All right, Captain Troy. Where is Robert? I promised him I wouldn't tell anyone. He placed his faith and trust in me for some reason. But at this moment, I'm the only person he has. I see. I could betray him. Maybe I'll have to. But somehow, I'd rather do anything but that. I understand. And I sympathize, Captain Troy. Does that surprise you? No. A promise made to a very young boy is a sacred trust. I violated that trust. You did? Six months ago, Robert came to me and said, Father, I'm the happiest boy in the world. Can we live in manner manner? Forever. And I said, so happy the word, tears my eyes. I said, yes, Robert, we can live here as long as you like. I promise. You gave him your word. We had a very happy life here, all of us. Pleasant and complicated, even, even primitive. Then came the letter from the colonial office. We no longer find it necessary to maintain the post of administrator to Mana Mana. We are therefore requested to return at once to London and await further instructions. That was all. Suddenly, simply came in the post one morning, delivered by the Inter Island mailboat. Well, you had no choice. No. I'm not a rich man, Captain Troy. I spent 30 years of my life in Her Majesty's colonial service. My wife died a year after Robert was born. I wanted to get away so that I could forget the sorrow in my heart. I requested a distant assignment. I was given mana mana. At first, I'll have to admit, it was a bit of a shock. But then I discovered a new country full of simple, but Loving people. You know, the chief, Amu, and I have played one game of chess every single day for the last five years. Leaving Mana Mana to you must have been as big a shock as it was to Robert. Even more so. To the boy, his world merely seemed to be coming to an end. Mine actually did. What will you do? Nothing. Life can be sometimes pleasant, sometimes harsh. If we can't cope with it, we might as well give up. I understand. All 
I want you to take me to Robert. But a moment ago, you said... A promise is a sacred trust. Therefore, I'm prepared to make you one. I promise you, Captain Troy, if you will take me to Robert and let me talk to him, and if he still refuses to come with me to London, I will leave him in Mana Mana. Leave him? This is the only world he's ever known. All his friends are here. Chief Omu loves him as his own son. He will be cared for and loved. You may be sure of that. What about you? It is the price I will risk paying, if you accept my promise. I'm asking you to break your word, Captain Troy, but I'm offering you my own in exchange. Will you accept it? Yes, sir. Captain Troy and I are going for a walk alone. I suppose I have to get my boat ready. It's no use. You must have seen us coming here. Could wait a while longer. Four hours, the longest four hours I've ever lived. It's getting dark, Mr. Troy. I'm returning to my house. Perhaps tomorrow. Yes, perhaps tomorrow. I'm sorry. I, I don't blame you, Mr. Troy. I blame myself. My name is Timmy. What are you doing with that? Did Robert send you for it? Is this a six tent captain? Yes, that's a... Did Robert send you for it? Why? Why does Robert need a sextant? 
Timmy. For the voyage. He is leaving for another island. Take me to him. Take me to him. You hear me? Timmy. <laughs> To listen to me. No, I don't. I can't trust you any longer. You broke a promise. Then give me a chance to explain. We have a law, a very important law. Nobody can break a promise. You did. Goodbye, Anna. Then if I broke the law, I, I have a right to a trial. Every seaman gets a fair trial. Trial? Of course. Wouldn't you want a trial if you broke a law? If you were a seagoing chap? Yes, I suppose so. Well, then, I demand my rights. If you have laws, you have trial. It's a rule of the sea. All right. You'll have your trial. Back to shore, mates. Very well. The trial will begin. Captain Adam Troy, you broke a promise. Are you the judge? We're all the judges. Very well. I plead guilty. Well, if that's the case, what's the use of a trial? I have a defense, Your Honor. You have to listen to it. Very well. But make it brief. I have to be off before they start the search again. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is wrong to break a promise, but sometimes we have no choice. Sometimes it's better to break a promise than it is to break someone's heart. You! Do you love your father? Would you hurt him? And what about you? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. Kara, your father's the chief. Do you love him? Yes, I do, and don't you say anything bad about him. It's not fair. Loving our fathers has nothing to do with it. You broke a promise. What about you, Robert Tomlinson? Do you love your father? You know I do. And your sister, do you love her? Of course, what a stupid question. Would you hurt them? Would you deliberately hurt them? You broke a promise. Stop trying to change the subject. To hurt someone you love to satisfy yourself would be very selfish, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Yes. Would you be happy if you hurt your father? You run away and leave him? You knew it hurt him very much and never, never come back again? No, sir. Would you leave your father if you knew it hurt him? Oh, no, sir. And what about you, Kara? Would you leave your father if you knew he loved you? I... I... Would you? Make him stop, Robert. He's getting it all mixed up. Leave her alone. Thought you were my friend, Robert. Of course, that was before I suspected you could be selfish. I am not selfish. Before I realized you didn't really love your father. I do, I do. Are you willing to hurt him? I wouldn't hurt him, not ever. Are you sure? Are you very sure? Yes, I'm very sure. Ladies and gentlemen, I broke my promise to liberty. I brought Colonel Tomlinson here so he could tell you something that would make you all very happy. Robert, your father is willing to let you stay on money, money if you choose, but he has to go on to England. That's all he has to tell you. Really, Adam? Your happiness means more to your father than anything in the whole wide world. You see, your father is a most unselfish man. That's why I broke my promise. He's down at the house now. He misses you. He loves you. 
loves you, Robert. I rest my case. in a golden coach? All gold. Now, Gardner McKay. In our next adventures in paradise, a lovely island girl saves my life. I'm deeply grateful until I find out she thinks that I'm a gift from the sea and hers forever. Take her back to the house. And then what? After you kill Troy, then what are you going to do to her? You and Tara will find an island far to the sun. You belong to Tara now. I don't belong to anybody. The islands have changed. There's radio everywhere, Paula. Fast ships, fast planes. Once the police know where I am, I'm through. And the police will know if that man out there stays alive. I've got to kill him, Paula. Mahana, give him strength. be with us when guest stars Greta Chi, Simon Oakland, and Phyllis Savory join me in The Beach at Bell Ends, next on Adventures in Paradise. Until then, thank you for watching. <laughs>